Good morning. Good morning. I love it. We're at a school. That's the best way, I think, to start uh, any program, uh, especially our, our breakfast this morning. I was just talking with uh, Dr. Spraga, with Nicole Heaney, uh, about how long I've been coming to this event, how long I've been able to enjoy the fact that BCC is a leader in experiential education. And it began, for me anyway, it began with the cooperative education program. And Nicole and I were talking, it's been more than 30 years. And I can remember back uh, before Jack, we had President Farley here, and I can remember working with her to in, not only ensure that we began it with a federal grant, but that when the grant ran out after three years, what would the college do? Would experiential education continue? Would cooperative education continue? And at the time, um, a lot of people, a lot of people in the world that I was in, uh, in uh, working at a chamber of commerce in the region, uh, working with a lot of business people, felt that cooperative education was the purview of Northeastern University. Exclamation point. That was it. And not here. It took a lot of work, it took a lot of dedication by a lot of people, many of whom are still with us and some are here in the room today and they continue the legacy as members of our advisory boards, not just for co-op but for others as well. And the college stepping up when the grant went away and embedding the cooperative education program and now the full array of experiential education here at BCC for literally thousands of students to be able to take advantage of. And it has long been considered the most effective way for people to learn is through experience. And it matches the students who come here because they want to learn, they want to better themselves, and other, others of us who are out in the community who are willing to, to give of our time and our talents to give them an opportunity to gain some experience. So welcome to this year's breakfast, which is maybe number 30 or 31. Uh, and uh, hopefully all of you will will be here 30 years from now when they're celebrating the 60th. Pretty sure I won't be here. I'm gonna introduce somebody now. I'm gonna ask him to come up and stand beside me first. This is gonna be the last opportunity for the, uh, the cooperative education program and the other experiential learning programs at BCC to thank a man who has done an amazing job for the past 17 years. And that's our president, Jack Spraga. Jack, would you come up please? an opportunity to work with Jack uh, uh, formerly at the New Bedford Area Chamber of Commerce with a mentoring program, the Smiles mentoring program that I was involved with here on campus and cooperative education in marketing here, a marketing committee that they put together uh, at one time in a number of other roles and have been so impressed about how hard he works. He is a legend here on campus as somebody who is virtually always the first one here and the last one to leave. And that's not just Monday through Friday, but that's on the weekends as well. If anyone uh, is able to personify an institution and the success of that institution, it's Jack Spraga for all that he has accomplished and all that he continues to do. Um, 17 years ago, he came here having cut his teeth on community college education in both Maryland and Rhode Island. But I think the Jack Spraga that we've all come to know that's education oriented, there's a little more to the story because I don't think what a lot of people realize is who he was before that. That he was a pilot in the military during Vietnam and that he flew multiple missions while he was, while he was a pilot in the military. That he was an athlete, that he was a running back in football, in college, that he was a catcher of all the positions where you're gonna get run over, <laughs> regardless if you're wearing the equipment, that's where Jack was. As a family man, and, it, and the relationship and the love he, that, he, that he enjoys with his wife, the way they support each other, her at the college, the support that he offers to her at the Children's Museum here in Fall River and their children, 
And then when he came here to BCC, and what's happened here since he arrived, which are campuses, full-blown campuses, in New Bedford, and in Attleboro, and in Taunton, and twice as many young people in our region able to take advantage of, not just young people, young and old, able to take advantage of the programs and services offered by Bristol Community College, doubling the number of people who take advantage of Bristol Community College. That, I think, is how you measure someone's true impact in a relatively short period of time and that will carry forward forever. It's a tough act to follow. And now I think about, you know, what, what's he done recently? Not much other than begin to, to take a leadership role at the college in all of the communities that we serve in workforce development, and in particular in pursuit of the wind industry and what that can do for, the, for, for all of us who live in this region by offering opportunities not only to educate people so that they'll have an opportunity for a better life through better employment, but working hard to develop those employment opportunities for those very same people. I think the one thing, though, I talked about opening the campuses in New Bedford and Attleboro and Fall River. And having spent a lot of time in New Bedford, and I remember the early days of, of uh, wanting more kids from New, young people in particular from New Bedford to be able to, to go to BCC. And so buses would actually pick them up in front of the chamber and bring them over here and then bring them back at the end of the day. And it cost them, I believe, a dollar each way. The first day they did it, they needed two buses. So it was two buses a day. And the message that that was, that that, what that said to me, and in particular now when you have a campus in New Bedford with over 200 different offerings in terms of classes and all of the faculty and staff that goes with it, and more than 2,000 students, I believe last I heard it was 2,500 students taking classes at BCC in New Bedford, what that tells me is that having a community college located here has been a wonderful facility now for more than 50 years. But simply being 12 miles away in Fall River might as well have been 1,000 miles for a lot of the people who really needed to be able to take advantage of what BCC offers. And the man who built that bridge and the man who made it possible for the people of New Bedford to take full advantage of Bristol Community College is Jack Spraga. And I care about a lot of places. I want Fall River to do well, and I want Attleboro to do well, and I want Taunton to do well in all of the communities in Bristol County. But I'm a New Bedford guy, and I'll be forever grateful that this man did what he did for the people who live in the city that I call home. So with that, please welcome our president, Dr. John J. Jack Spraga. Well, thank you, Jim, for that lovely introduction. I think we're out of time. That's the end of the program. <laughs> uh, you know, I uh, have been a long uh, buyer of Jim. Uh, I tease him uh, when he was the head of the chamber. Uh, he, was, he was rich and wealthy, making a lot of money, as Rick is doing now. Uh, and he gave it up uh, for his dream and his commitment to education and began with the Smiles program, the mentoring program. Uh, and it was a real risk uh, for him to do that. Uh, he had a very comfortable life and a very uh, well respected in the community, and yet he took this uh, challenge uh, to further education, uh, first in New Bedford and then throughout southeastern Massachusetts. And it was not easy, and uh, I was glad to be able to help in any way I could, but he had the lead in it, and uh, so it's a mutual admiration society, I guess. I long admired all that Jim has done. Um, I just want to say a few things. In fact, 30 years ago, uh, I was at CCRI, and I started uh, uh, in a position to start the co-op uh, program at CCRI. It had, a, it had been going in the earlier times and then uh, fell by the wayside. So uh, that, I'm very familiar with co-op and uh, uh, the wonderful value that it holds for our students and for our faculty and for employers. Um, 
This is one of my favorite events of the year, of our academic year, is to have people come uh, today uh, for this breakfast and recognize not only the students' achievement, but uh, which is very important, that's why we're in business, uh, but the uh, uh, employers and the faculty and staff and everybody who uh, makes this program go uh, and be in such a wealthy, uh, and wealthy is the wrong word, but a rich way uh, for our students as well as civic learning as well. Uh, I also, at uh, CCRI, started the service learning program. Uh, those, uh, I always tease about uh, Mary Zahm about this hyphen between service and learning uh, that is very important. I think it's grammatically un incorrect now where they dropped it uh, in uh, old fashioned ways that uh, are being dropped. But the, uh, the hyphen to me between service and learning is extremely important because it connected the service with the learning that took place. And uh, um, th this day and age, you hear a governor, uh, the, uh, people in Washington, uh, everyone talking about the importance of internships. And uh, what they really mean by internships is just what we're celebrating today, is that actual experience in the community, experience in the workplace, and uh, you have been uh, great pioneers in this. As Jim said, 30 years ago, uh, BCC was moving into this field. And um, uh, with co-op education, with the service learning, civic engagement, we call it now, uh, and uh, it's, it's so valuable uh, for, our, uh, for our students. Uh, you're going to hear some wonderful stories. I hope you have a chance to read the uh, stories on the table in the a little uh, pamphlet there that's on the table. Each of those stories is uh, a moving, and it, and it, and it shows uh, what, we're, uh, what we're all about at BCC, and, and that is student success. I, told, uh, every, I tell everyone at the college, we wouldn't have a job if it weren't for our students, and for student success, our most important product. Um, the, Jim was so gracious in his comments about Attleboro and uh, uh, Taunton and New Bedford, but you know what it boiled down to was access. To, uh, our for our students to learning opportunities. And what better access uh, for our students than what you show and demonstrate uh, here today, uh, not just today, of course, but uh, we're, we're celebrating it today. And that is access to uh, uh, experience, uh, experiential learning, access to new learning uh, paradigms and new dimensions in learning, and enrich the learning. So when you hear the governor and others talk about the important, they pound the table, we've got to have more internships, we've got to have this and that. This is exactly what we've been doing for over 30 years. And, uh, and you uh, put in service learning and civic engagement. What they mean, uh, th uh, those external experts, uh, what they mean is uh, a rich learning environment. And I thank you for having provided that for our students. And I thank our students for all you've done, and you'll continue to carry that torch wherever you go. Wherever you go, you'll take BCC with you. So thank you very much. Please enjoy the, the day, and uh, it's going to be a wonderful celebration. Thank you. You know, we talk about uh, experiential learning and civic engagement, and our keynote speaker today is somebody who demonstrates that when he goes to work, and he also demonstrates it with what he does in the community that uh, he does on his own, not, not at work. Jeffrey Pelletier serves as the president of Junior Achievement of Southern Massachusetts. JA is the nation's largest organization dedicated to give young people the knowledge and skills they need to own their future focusing on the critically important content areas of career readiness, financial literacy, and entrepreneurship. JA of, Southeastern, of Southern Massachusetts, headquartered in the city of New Bedford, reaches nearly 6,000 students each year across 21 cities and towns. Previously, Pelletier supported the strategic economic development agenda of the city of New Bedford as the business development and communications officer for the New Bedford Economic Development Council. He also served as program director for Executives Without Borders, a nonprofit organization dedicated to engaging the business community in solving the world's greatest humanitarian challenges. 
In Haiti, he directed a nationwide jobs and recycling program that collected over 35 million plastic bottles and generated over 250,000 in incomes for communities in need. In Honduras, he directed private sector engagement projects with a Fortune 500 company to increase the sustainability of the life-saving medical work of the nonprofit organization Central American Medical Outreach. He's a graduate of Methodist University in North Carolina with a degree in business administration. He's also a graduate of Bishop Tang High School and of the Leadership South Coast program. He volunteers as a member of the board for Leadership South Coast, the New Bedford Education Foundation, and Missions for Humanity. He's a member of the New Bedford Economic Development Council, and he volunteers for the Ron Burton Training Village each summer. He was a nominee for the 2014 and 2015 South Coast Emerging Leader Award. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Jeffrey Pelletier. Good morning, everybody. Uh, you'll have to uh, excuse my voice a little bit here this morning. Uh, we have a two-year-old uh, who is becoming uh, quite proficient in bringing home a variety of things home from daycare. Um, and, and so we just have to uh, push forward. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a great honor to be here uh, this morning. Uh, re really grateful to Aaron and uh, everyone at BCC for, for having me here and just for, for all that you do uh, in, in the extremely important areas. Uh, just what you do in the community through your uh, civic engagement uh, in, in co-op program. Um, and I, I just had a, a few thoughts to share uh, this morning. Uh, with, with what we do at Junior Achievement, uh, what's neat is we're in the classroom, right? We're, we're, we're with our local students every day. Uh, and so just inherently, we're talking about the future with them. We're talking about what, what our future workforce is gonna look like, uh, how our community is gonna look at the future, uh, what our future opportunities are, uh, and also our challenges. Uh, and, and so when I think about the work that all the students here do and, and what this program does, um, particularly starting on, on the challenge front, uh, it, I think it's just critically, it's, it's critically important. And I'm just, just looking over at our table, seeing the student work that you've done at that from everywhere from the FDA uh, to the Buttonwood Park Zoo. Because the reality, if we think about some of our future challenges, uh, it, it's gonna take all of us to solve them. Right? And, and we, we kind of start at a place of uh, we're all in this together, right? Uh, across so many areas, whether we look at environmental challenges or, or economic challenges or social challenges, um, we are all in this together. And so in, in, in my own life, when, when I did work uh, in Haiti and Honduras, uh, it was because in a very visceral way, I just had this, this, this notion of, if this little girl in Port-au-Prince gets an education, that's good for me, that's good for my family. Um, right? Cancer runs in my family. Maybe, maybe she's the one who becomes the doctor with the breakthrough cure. Um, when I think about the work that you all do through your service learning uh, and civic engagement programs, um, th that's why we want, you know, the, the little boy in Fall River to get an education because we don't know what he will be. We don't know if he's going to be the one um, who creates the next technological breakthrough. Uh, that, that fundamentally moves things forward, right? We, we don't know, um, but, but all, all that we do know uh, is that when we invest in each other, uh, o only good things are, are going to happen. Uh, and, and, that, and I think, and, and so in, in my life through the work that I had done overseas uh, and now the work that I do here, um, that, that, that's, the, that's the approach in, in, the, in the model that I took. Um, is this notion of investing in each other, knowing that to solve some of these challenges uh, that are coming down the pike and that are already upon us now, uh, it is going to take all of us. Um, and so the work, you know, f for the students, and, and again, t talking uh, at, at Jay right now, we, we work with BCC, we're partners, and and so uh, 
I, I, I know some of the work that you all do, and it's, just, it's incredibly important. Uh, we, we have a range of issues uh, facing us locally now, uh, and, and it's, it's an all hands on deck situation. And so uh, I, I think it's, it's incredibly important the impact that, that BCC students are driving in our community right now through this work. Um, in, in thinking to the, to the future as well, uh, on the opportunity side, uh, I think civic engagement and service learning, and I'm sure uh, you know, the, the students in the, in the room here now uh, would agree with this, is I, I also think it, it can, be, it's a, can be a tremendous accelerator in your own life to find your passion and to do, uh, to do what you're meant to do. Uh, and, and I know that was the case for me. When, when I went down to Honduras, um, and I, I kind of kid about this, uh, I, I went down as, as an intern volunteer uh, when, when I started my work in international development, uh, and I kind of leaned forward on my ability to speak Spanish uh, to get the gig. Uh, maybe, you know, I took Spanish in school, but I kind of leaned forward uh, to, to, to get the gig, and I ended up meeting my wife, actually, on my first morning in Honduras, and so there's all kinds of benefits, uh, you know, that, that, that you end up getting. She, she's, she was my translator. Uh, you know, she took good care of me there and uh, still the same here today. Um, but but by, by really getting engaged in the community, and for, for me that, that was an internship in that particular period, uh, you, you don't know the, that, where that's going to take you. And, and it really allows you uh, to, to deliver so, so much value and, and you make connections. And for me, I, I'm from here. I, I grew up in New Bedford. Uh, and uh, I am able, amidst all the challenges of you know, running a nonprofit organization, uh, I'm able today to at least say I'm doing what I want to be doing uh, with my life. Uh, I, am, I, I am competing and working uh, towards the things that I genuinely believe in and that I've always wanted my life to be about, and all of that started uh, through that internship uh, in, in, you know, in, in my own career. Uh, it, it progressed from there. Um, and, and so I, I think it's, it's just an incredibly important uh, program here uh, that you do have both the community impact that, that BCC and, and all these students are driving uh, and, and making impact in so many years. And, and for each student, I, I would just encourage all of you to continue to, to find your passion, um, to you, use these different civic engagement experiences uh, to see what fits and see what doesn't fit. Um, to see what gets you out of bed in the morning, you know, on fire. Don't need an alarm clock. Uh, you know, you, you're doing w w what you think you're meant to do. Um, and, and, and I would just say, uh, you know, lastly here, towards that notion, and particularly to all the students in the room, because that, that, that's what this region requires. Uh, that, that's, I think, what our future challenges require. That, that's what this community requires. Uh, it is all of you to be utilizing all of the skills that you've learned here at BCC to utilize the, the connections that, that you made uh, in your service learning projects uh, and, and to propel this community, this region, this country, and the world forward. Um, it's, it's, it's just what, what we require, and, and I think through this program you've gotten a tremendous head start. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm a really big fan of, of everything uh, that the BCC does across the community, and, and most uh, certainly in this area. Uh, and uh, it's a thrill for me to be here today and, and learn more about all the good work that you're doing. Uh, and I really appreciate it, and thank you very much. Have a good morning, everybody. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff and I had an uh, interesting conversation uh, before the breakfast started because my first job after I got out of the military was what he's doing now. Uh, then it was Junior Seaman of Greater New Bedford. He's taking over the whole region. Now we're going to learn a little bit more about uh, what's going on here with respect to uh, cooperative education and civic engagement, the whole the realm of experiential learning. Dr. Suzanne Buglione is the Dean of the Lash Division of Teaching and Learning and provides administrative oversight to many departments, including faculty and staff professional development, experiential learning, library services, pathway programs, and academic support services. Please welcome Dr. Buglione.
Good morning, everyone. So I have the unbelievable privilege of working with some amazing people who make all of this happen, all of this experiential education. And uh, I want to start with a few thank yous, um, but must say that uh, I could probably do that for the rest of the period of time today, so I'll try to be brief. Um, this breakfast takes a village, and uh, I want to thank first and foremost the Bristol Community College Foundation for their financial support of the breakfast. The uh, Culinary Arts Department who, let's give them a hand, wasn't that a great breakfast? <laughs> Absolutely, thank you. Um, the, the Office of Communications, all of the lovely materials that we have here today were carefully crafted for us and we want to thank you as well. Um, the numbers of faculty and staff, uh, could the faculty members who are in the, in the audience stand up, please, for a moment, if you could? These, fa yes, please, give them a big round of applause. These faculty members uh, have um, been so committed to this work of experiential education and uh, we're very grateful for all the work that you do. Um, we also have two advisory committees, a cooperative education and a civic engagement advisory committees. If you're an advisory committee member, could you stand for a moment? Thank you so much. You know, advisory committees are, um, are uh, really important to us because they give us feedback about our work. They bring external perspectives uh, that we might not uh, be thinking about. So I thank you for your service. Um, we have a number of community partners and businesses that are with us. And I'm going to ask you for a moment if you could stand. Uh, if you're a community partner or a, an employer of one of our interns, could you please stand for a moment? Thank you so much. Look at this. It's fantastic. We know that you take such loving care of our students and we appreciate that, creating opportunities for them to not only serve the region but also to advance their own careers and it's much appreciated. Um, we also have a number of students and so there are many students who take great initiative to ensure that they have an experiential education element to their programs or certificates. Could the students stand for a moment, please? Yeah, let's give it up for the students. Fantastic. Fantastic, thank you so much. And, uh, and for all that you've contributed to our communities. Um, this breakfast also takes a number of other folks like facilities and our IT services, our TV services, and our Bristol Community College ambassadors. So I wanna thank all of you for all that you've contributed. Um, and last but certainly not least, there are two teams of people that have been instrumental in pulling all of this together, but not only that, pulling all of this together all year long. And so I'm gonna call some names. Let's hold our applause till the end, if you don't mind. So um, Aaron Smith, who's our coordinator of civic engagement, please stand. Robin uh, Worthington, who is our incoming faculty fellow for civic engagement. Um, uh, Luz Perez, who is our staff associate for both civic engagement and cooperative education. Amy Blanchett, who is our uh, student worker intern, uh, excuse me, work study, and has been for an extended period of time. We're sad that Amy's graduating, but happy for her at the same time. Um, Nick O'Brien, who is also a staff associate in civic engagement. Jennifer Punello, who is the director of civic uh, cooperative education. Dave LePage, 
coordinator of cooperative education, Nicole Heaney, who is our faculty fellow in cooperative education, Jennifer Arellis, who uh, is a, um, a navigator who works in cooperative education in New Bedford. Uh, let's give this amazing group of people a round of applause. Thank you so much. These are the folks that make it happen. So um, you see here, there's a list of the names of all of the people on our advisory boards. And again, I want to underscore the important work of our advisory board members. These are the folks that advocate for our program and the college and the community, give us input on our curriculum and our placements, um, and help us to connect and network with other folks to uh, really expand our programming. So again, I thank you. Um, we're going to celebrate today our learning partnerships. Uh, we have the most outstanding students, employers, faculty, and staff. And this is what helps us to be successful. Uh, we want to recognize those folks that have contributed in great ways today and, um, and who work to educate the residents of the South Coast area. You all are developing our community's future leaders. Um, and add to both the economic development and the educational attainment of our region. So we want to uh, underscore how important experiential education is for our students. You've heard much this morning already about how it helps our students to not only give back to their communities, but also to advance their careers. But we also know that experiential education is important to things like retention, how we're able to support the academic success of our students here at the college. And so your contribution has not only been important important in terms of developing skills for our students, but also in helping them sustain their educational journey. And for that, we're very grateful. Um, I think I have a slide coming up, perhaps. Good. Thank you. There we go. So a little bit about cooperative education. Um, we use a very high touch model here at the college, which means we spend a lot of time with students and employers on the front end. And we found that to be very successful. Uh, and every student receives some one-on-one -on -one assistance, including resume writing, interviewing skills. Um, and we work with, as you know, hundreds of employers in this network. Uh, all of our cooperative education courses are offered at all four campus sites. Um, and uh, students come to a weekly seminar, or some of them may do it online, um, that helps them to make connections between what they're doing in the field as well as what they're learning in the classroom. And we feel that's a really important combination. Um, we also have a connecting activities program, which focuses on providing interns in the community. Could I ask Delia Lagarde and Christy uh, to stand, please, the staff from that program? Thank you so much. We know that high school students in the region need to have these kinds of experiential education uh, opportunities. And so Christy and Zelia work diligently with a number of uh, folks uh, from the high schools from the region to be able to uh, place the students and support the students in meaningful internships, which can only help them in their own career advancement as well. Um, I want to talk about uh, the, uh, some numbers for you. So um, in connecting activities in the Youth Works grants, we've served 212 youths. Uh, they placed 282 high school students in internships at 121 employer sites. And that's just connecting activities. So it's really remarkable. Um, they've also been working around uh, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math uh, to work with the Global Learning Charter Public School and the Dighton Rehoboth students uh, to place them in internships related to that field. Um, they've worked with uh, Greater New Bedford Vocational Technical High School, uh, placing over 1,000 students with 40 employers. So there's some great work that's been happening there. 
Um, we have uh, 50 connecting activity students from uh, who've, who are graduating high school this spring, um, and they are enrolling in Bristol Community College uh, in the fall. So we're very pleased about that. Um, I want to uh, also mention uh, some things about co-op. Um, the um, the co-op uh, program is a very critical program. Uh, we've placed uh, 204 students in internships through that program uh, in majors such as veterinary health care, business administration, communication, criminal justice, fine arts, general studies, office administration, paralegal, and liberal arts. So quite a range of programs where students are enjoying internships. We have 181 different communities, uh, different partners in the communities, uh, employer sites, local businesses, nonprofit organizations, government agencies, schools, and community-based organizations. And our outcomes are tremendous in cooperative education. 35% uh, of our students report being offered a job, paid job, at the end of their internship. Pretty good, right? That's what we want. 98% of our students are, uh, have uh, had the experience through their internship of advancing their career and academic goals, and 93% of them have had the experience to improve their communication skills. So some really good outcomes, and all because of our partnerships. So we really appreciate that. Let me say a little bit about civic, uh, civic engagement now, if I could. There we go, advance the slide. Um, so civic engagement saw some great success also during this academic year. Um, it, in partnership with all of our community organizations and the civic learning team, we've been able to offer course offerings that have met the new statewide um, policy on civic learning. Uh, some of you may not be familiar, but a few years back, the Board of Higher Education passed a resolution asking that our students all have the opportunity to learn about being civic participators. And so we've been able to work on that with, uh, in conjunction with faculty members uh, through the civic learning team here at BCC. And it's an important part of our region's health to have students who understand fully what it means to participate in a democratic society. Uh, civic engagement has uh, engaged over 650 students through 40 different courses, which is amazing. Uh, 28 faculty members have been teaching those courses, and we've been working with more than 75 community partners this year. Our students have worked in youth programs in the public schools and with senior citizens through health and wellness services. They have uh, affected uh, positively the community. They've raised money to help fight student hunger here on campus, created marketing plans for nonprofit organizations, registered people to vote, and advocated for public education at the State House. So our students are truly making a huge difference in the community. And finally, uh, we want to note that one of our students received an important distinction as the Newman Civic Fellow. Uh, and 65 of our students will be receiving some type of community leadership or volunteer service award this Thursday at our student awards night. So we really are profoundly um, uh, pleased about the work that our students have done. I have one more thank you to make and uh, before I introduce the video to you. Um, I want to ask the faculty members who teach cooperative education as adjunct faculty to stand. Steve Frechette, please, uh, Jennifer Deckers, and uh, Ann Cazera. Thank you so very much. So I have the wonderful distinction now to introduce to you our video. You'll have the opportunity to actually hear the voices of our students. And please note that some of our students from Connecting Activities are in the video. They are from Dartmouth High School. Uh, you'll see some uh, of our students who are in both cooperative education and in civic engagement service learning classes. So thank you so very much. I hope you enjoy the video and the awards to come. Thanks. care and 
education intern. I help take care of the animals, I help prep their food. And I also do education programs where we teach kids about a specific species of animals and then we teach them how we would rehabilitate those animals. Having co-op students and interns that are interested in becoming professionals in this field gives us a high quality level of um, volunteer. Actually doing it is different than knowing it. Um, so it gives me full-on hands experience that I would, I'm really going to need if I want to pursue a career in um, wildlife rehabilitation. We, we've, had, we've been very lucky with the students. Um, we have, uh, right now we have three students, very mature, professional, comes to work, uh, come to work on time, uh, can pick up things quickly, can multitask, do a lot of different things, so it's been, been worked out well for us. We're tackling, I guess, problems in the workplace that could arise. So, for example, if a customer orders a supply of needles and all of those needles are the wrong shape or dimension, then we might help find out and see where it went wrong, so where in the production process it went wrong. We've examined like a couple different projects. Another one was the chemical etching where we uh, created a work instruction so that anybody can do that specific job. Here I really learned how a business is run, the details of the manufacturing and the production and the administration. I definitely recommend the internship program to all students because a lot of people have ideas of what they want to do or think they know what they want to do and then don't find out whether they like it or not until they've graduated. I did my service learning project at St. John's Evangelist School in Attleboro, Massachusetts. My project was to test a dissociative theory in which stated that by, by allowing children to feel included, it would prevent them from acting out violently, it would reduce certain criminal tendencies. I would definitely recommend Doing a service project for criminal justice students, it wouldn't help to try things like working in a school and working in different environments. Our service learning project was a paint night fundraiser for the Grab and Go Pantry at BCC. The amount of people that use it, I believe she said it's like 25 students a day, and then it's $1.25 per bag. Yeah. So if you think about that, that adds up quickly, and it's all based off of donations. There's no funding. Mm -hmm. So realizing that they weren't funded was a huge thing for me because I wanted to know how I could help. So I decided to do a fundraiser and Kathy and two other classmates joined me on my adventure. Yeah. For, I think paint nights are pretty common. Um, I know I go to a lot of them, but not always do people know, what, like, you know, what's a paint night? You're throwing paint at each other? Like, what's going on? Basically, everyone gets canvases and there's a picture that is agreed on. Like, this is what you want to come and paint. We had a total of 60 tickets and we sold all of them and we had 52 people. We added the addition of having refreshments served. We did a drawing and a raffle. And then on top of it, one of our classmates, Sabrina, she did do a facet to our project. She sold chocolate pops at the event, mm -hmm. which was able to reel in an extra $75. And we raised a total of $2,000. And then after the event was paid for, we were able to furnish them with a check. Last semester, I did a co-op experience program uh, with this organization called Chime In. The Changes Me International and part of this organization we collectively engage youth ambassadors around the world to do service work. In last December we went to Colombia for seven days and within Colombia we learned about composer toilets and the benefits uh, for access to clean water and permaculture and then we were there for 10 days and after that we transitioned to working in Guatemala where we engaged with this uh, NGO called Techo, which means house in Spanish, and we build homes, uh, five homes in three days. I think co-ops are one of the best ways to take the learning you have in a classroom and really use it as a learning in the real world. I highly recommend co-ops as a way to expand your mind and your knowledge within the niche that you're interested in working in. the great video and the the, uh, the stories are always the best part, aren't they? And the, the people in the video, kids and the adults, did a great job of representing their program and representing the college. Okay, so now I would ask all of the award winners to please come up to the stage uh, and line up over here. And I want to welcome a few people up here to make presentations of awards. David LePage, the Cooperative Education Coordinator. 
Nicole Heaney, an assistant professor here at BCC, Aaron Smith, the coordinator of civic engagement, and Jack, Dr. Spraga uh, also uh, wants you to come up and be involved in this as well. So Jack, why don't you come on up? Got to pay attention when you're in school, Jack. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So this year's Outstanding Co-op Student Award winner embodies all the qualities we look for in a recipient. Intelligent, hardworking, dedicated, driven, conscientious are just some of the words that come to mind when describing her. I had the pleasure of working with this student to locate her first inter internship at NASA Fruit, and Nicole assisted with her second placement. From the moment you meet her, it's instantly apparent what a great person she is. Her internship, or her current internship su su site supervisor felt the same way. Here is what Lucy LaForce uh, of Liberty Utilities, who also happens to be a BCC alum, uh, 1989 program for the uh, Business Administration, had to say about her. It has been a pleasure having the student work her as an intern. She is a quick learner and is able to multitask within the department. She has lots of potential and she is eager to learn. It would be nice to see her grow with this company providing an opportunity becomes available. Well, what do you know, an opportunity became available. So I'm also thrilled to announce that the student accepted a full-time position with Liberty Utilities upon graduation. This year's Outstanding Co-op Award winner is Jocelyn Murray. Good morning. Um, I'm honored today to present this year's Co-op Employer of the Year Award to Michelle Kamara from the Naval Undersea Warfare Center in Newport, Rhode Island. I've worked with Michelle for about 18 years through the Pathways program. Just a quick correction, Jim, I wasn't in the Co-op program 30 years ago when you said you worked with me. <laughs> I was just a child <laughs> or a teenager. Um, uh, so I've worked with Michelle for 18 years through the Pathways program. This is a great program that's designed to provide our students with outstanding entry-level co-ops in office administration, business administration, and computer information system with an eye towards being offered a full-time government, federal government job um, upon graduation. Michelle has been a huge advocate for BCC students, and although this program is open to campuses all across the world, she comes personally to BCC every single year to um, recruit students for these prestigious positions. Over the years, Newick has hired well over 50 BCC students and converted them to full-time employees. Michelle knows that BC student, BCC students are bright, hardworking, and professional. Overall, they're great employees. She herself is a BCC grad. She's class of 1902 and got her job at Newick <laughs> through the Pathways program. Michelle, thank you for providing BCC students with such great opportunities and for being such a huge advocate for our program. Congratulations on your award and your recent promotion to Chief Learning Officer at Newick. We will miss working with you, but know our relationship will continue with your office. Michelle Kamara. So I have the honor of presenting three awards, the first of which is our Service Learning Student of the Year Award. So the recipient of our Service Learning Student of the Year Award is a student who has been involved with service learning for nearly her entire time here at the college and has continuously exceeded the expectations of her professor. 
This student has participated in projects such as clinical lab science bone marrow drives with Be The Match, a health and wellness fair designed to help students recognize the importance of self-care and encouraging students to take a break for themselves during finals, and most recently, a series of open educational resources that provide future classes with course content and study materials outside of a textbook. Students in clinical lab science were tasked with a project to create these OERs for future students, and all students in the class were responsible for different content areas. Not only did this student complete her required content, uh, content, she sought to infuse her love of art with the project and took it upon herself to hand draw over a dozen images um, that corresponded with the project content um, in an effort to bring the content to life. In the last few semesters, she has been instrumental in the success of eight different service learning projects. In addition to her service learning projects, this student has worked over the last year to serve her fellow students, taking on the roles of supplemental instructor, tutor, and orienting new freshmen. She continually goes above and beyond to assist other students with their studies and has taken an active interest in the success of struggling students, playing a key, in, a key role in their academic progress. She truly exemplifies everything we hope for, not just of our service learning students, but all of our students here at BCC. So it is my honor to present Vanessa Little with the Service Learning Student of the Year Award. Thank you, Vanessa. Okay, so my next award is our Service Learning Faculty Member of the Year Award. So our Service Learning Faculty of the Year Award is presented to someone who has dedicated their life to service. She served as a Junior Vice Commandant for two years in the Marine Corps League, is active throughout the community, having served on several nonprofit boards, and most recently was an organizing volunteer for the Massachusetts Contingent for the Women's March on Washington. She has been part of the Fall River community for 10 years when she joined the Rotary Club of Fall River where she is currently the secretary but will be the vice president next year and regularly volunteers her time to support the service organizations throughout Bristol County. A member of the BCC community since 2012, Jennifer Vincent recently made the transition to adjunct faculty in history. In this last year, she took on multiple service learning courses where she used her passion for community involvement to engage her students in projects that included research of historical trails at the Oak Knoll Wildlife Sanctuary in Attleboro, teaching children about the Salem witch trials at the Berkeley Community School, and facilitating a discussion about the Civil War with senior citizens at Hamilton House in Providence. Her students have credited her for making history feel relevant and interesting, and on more than one occasion have noted that they wish they could take more of her courses. Jen does all of this while raising two dynamic daughters with her husband Michael, and simultaneously launching a new grant writing business where she has taken on a BCC student as an intern as well, so overlapping our programs. So our, our service learning faculty member of the year is Jennifer Vincent. And last but certainly not least, our Community Partner of the Year. So our Community Partner of the Year Award for 2016-2017 goes to the United Way of Greater Attleboro Taunton, an agency whose mission is to improve lives by uniting, the care, by uniting the caring power of communities to advance the common good. The United Way of Greater Attleboro Taunton traditionally serves as an umbrella organization and a funding source for many of our community partners in Attleboro and Taunton, um, and promoting our program and connecting us to these organizations. However, this year they themselves took on the role of being one of our community partners um, for a Marketing 101 service learning course in Attleboro. Um, students in this marketing course were assigned to do a SWOT analysis of a nonprofit organization that would provide the organization with recommendations and strategies to achieve their mission. Um, and they did this on fairly short notice. Um, and the United Way uh, helped us craft two projects for them. 
Um, one was uh, how to engage uh, baby boomers post-retirement because they have a strong population of baby boomers who have been heavily involved uh, both as volunteers and donors over the years. Um, and then the second project was how to engage millennials to come in and take the reins um, of the retiring boomers. Um, these projects allowed the students to take the theoretical concepts from their course and apply them in a real way, enhancing their learning of not only the course content but of work being being done in and for their community. Um, we are very grateful for the experience they helped provide our students this year and look forward to a long and prosperous partnership in the years to come. So Jamie, can you please come up and accept our Community Partnership Award of the Year. Thank you. Uh, the stories are always great. Both uh, people in the community, people on faculty, the student awards, and you can also see how special uh, recognition can be and how powerful it can be for, for people who've really uh, gone above and beyond and given their all to make sure they do a good job. Um, I've been coming to this building since 1979. Graduated here in 1983. I've seen so many changes, but I think one of the most powerful changes I've seen are events like this, and they happen not just with uh, civic engagement and, and the cooperative education program, experiential learning, but with other programs as well. I have said many times, and I want to say this morning in closing, I think it's the greatest compliment that I can pay to Bristol Community College. It works exactly as it's intended to work for the benefit of the people who live in our region. Not all organizations can, can say that, and not all of them can do it to such an excellent standard as what happens here at BCC. And it happens because of people. It happens because of Dr. Spraga. It happens because of the many staff and faculty you've met here. And it happens because we have students who come here for a reason and take advantage of what this college offers to improve their own lives. And once again, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to come and break bread to enjoy the success of individuals and of an institution in our region. We've come to the end. Uh, there are some evaluations on your table. Please do take a moment to fill it out. You can leave it on the table. It is labeled, please help us improve. The, one of the first questions is, what's the best part of the event? My last name is spelled M-A-T-H-E-S. <laughs> Not with an I. Um, but seriously, they are looking at all times for suggestions that anyone might want to offer so that this event, uh, as it's held for years into the future, can just be made stronger each and every year. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being someone who cares about Bristol Community College. And please drive safely and enjoy the rest of your day.